Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Now watch this. If either, I want to say when, not if, <laughs> if either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Friends are life and death. Proverbs 12, verse 26. The righteous choose their friends carefully. Did you see that? Carefully. Not casually. Wise people know how to choose their friends very carefully. But the way of the wicked leads them astray. Proverbs 27, verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, one person sharpens iron. Another, we make each other better. We're better together. Proverbs 13, 20. Walk with the wise and become wise. <laughs> Y'all remember my little, my little story about talking. Jason Boland, Bishop Boland's son, our friend in Atlanta. I asked Jason one time. He's so brilliant. I said, Jason, are, have you ever been tested to be a genius? I wouldn't tell that many guys that because their heads would blow up, you know. And he said, man, I'm not a genius. He said, I've just hung out with geniuses. When you hang out with the wise... You become wise. When you hang out with a fool that just spits off in the mouth or posts whatever they feel, I can get away from them people. Keep loving them. Smile at them at church. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> For a companion of fools suffers harm. Matthew 22, 36. Teacher, they're asking Jesus, which is the greatest commandment in the law? They're trying to trick them. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That's worship, right? We should love God first. The first and the greatest commandment. But then without them asking, do you notice? He volunteered this information. It must have been pretty important because he went the extra mile. They didn't ask him this question. But he went on to say, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. He said the second is like it. He said, lo he said loving mortal man is like loving the son of God. All of the prophets hang on these two commandments. It's interesting that the cross goes vertical, but also goes horizontal. Jesus said the greatest commandment was to love God, but to also love people. And being able to tell the difference, hear me now, being able to tell the difference between healthy and toxic friends could be a matter of life and death in your life. I, I'm not talking to teenagers only today, although I want the teenagers to really lean in. I'm talking to adults. I'm talking to people who want to go through life and the fires, they, don't, they come out, they don't even smell like smoke because they would have some faith friends in that fire. I'm talking to some people that want to make some wise choices in business. I'm talking to some people that want to stay married for the long haul they want to see their teenagers their children grow up and meet the right friends and marry the right people and marry heart and smart and all that. if you want that this message and series over the next few weeks is for you the bible goes into great depth to tell us it's a matter of life and death joseph had a dream but his dream didn't come to pass because he had the wrong voices in his life it wasn't until he got around the right voices the baker the butler and the pharaoh samson had a call of God on his life but Delilah tripped him up and 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 he missed the call that was on his life David I thought about David you know David was he actually me and Jeremy have stood in the caves there in in Israel where where Saul David walked up on Saul basically probably as far as from here to the back wall there uh the two caves and he walks up and, he, and his David's friends listen now Saul is king Saul is the leader Saul is the chosen man of God. Now he's wicked. He's evil. David had friends that said, they, they twisted the scripture. Could this be the day that God has delivered Saul into your hands? Now, the, the, the situation worked right. A lot of you have been like, favor. An open door. And he had friends that twisted the scripture. But because David had a relationship with his God, he knew that's not how God worked. He said, I will not touch the anointed man of God. Do my prophet no harm. But he had friends. The Bible says his friends said. They said. It's very important to not get caught up in what they say. So when you have situations, good times and bad. You better have the right friends in your life. You better have friends that can hurt with you. When you go through a storm. But you also better have friends that aren't so jealous that they can't celebrate you when you have a victory either. A lot of us want to go through storms with people because it empowers us. But how about when somebody does bad? How about when somebody gets the job that you prayed for? 
How about when you prayed and fasted for a brand new pickup truck? Just saying. And then Pastor Andrew, I mean, somebody gets one. I want to give you seven characteristics. That's all right. He's going to write a million dollar check. That's all right. He's all about money. We got a building to build. Seven characteristics of a healthy friend. Really quick. You ready? Seven character. I would lean in and you got to see if the friends around you measure up. Today, we're going to do a job interview for your friends. And we're going to see if they're going to make the cut. Because I'm going to tell you, I love people. And I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm not going to demean you or talk about you. But nobody in this room is more important than the destiny of my life and my family. I love you. I'll be at the hospital. I'll marry you and I'll bury you. <laughs> I'll dedicate your babies. I'll do all of that. But ultimately, I'm not going to let anybody detour me from the destiny that's on my, my life. And so I, I'm breaking down the word friends, okay? An acronym so you can remember it better. The F stands for faithful. A true friend, a real friend, an authentic friend is faithful. In good times and bad they're faithful. The Bible says brothers are born in adversity. Not in spite of it, but that's where a true brother is born in times of adversity. The average person will lose seven close friends in a lifetime. By the way, the average pastor, they said, Barna just came out in the spring and said the average pastor will lose seven close friends in a year. If this election, I'm going to say something bold here. If this election has caused a friend to walk out of your life or you have walked out of a friend's life, I'm sorry. I know that can hurt, especially if it's family. But can I just respectfully say if that's the case and you lost a friend over this election, either they weren't a true friend or you weren't a true friend. So either God was looking out for them or God was looking out for you. Because true friends are faithful. Say amen, somebody. Amen. They're faithful. The F stands for faithful. The R stands for real. They're authentic. They're the real deal. They're real at all times. Or should I say consistent? The, the same people you see in the crowd are the same ones behind the scenes. They're real. And they will allow you to be real. If you feel like you're having to sell yourself every time you go to lunch with that friend or every time you hang out with that friend, you're always needing to impress them, that's not a real friend. A real friend loves at all times. A real friend can say you can vote red or blue, and I'm not going to micromanage everything you post either. Well, they didn't call me back. Maybe they just had a headache. Real. Be real. And, and you can be real around them and they can be real around you. They're consistent. Now, I'm going to tell you how you know if they're real. When other friends walk away and it's just you two there, if they change and start acting a different way, they're not real. Well, they're real with me. What's, why are you so special? I'm preaching truth up in here. The I is for inclusive. Inclusive. A true friend will include you. If you're always the one having to reach out, if you're always the one having to say, will you go to lunch? Will you do this? Will you do that? Hey, we're having a party. Come over. Uh, let's go do this. Let's do breakfast. Let's go on vacation. Whatever you do with your friends. I don't have many because they said seven walk out of a church's <laughs> or pastor's life every. So, I don't, none of you my friends. Um, but anyway. I'm playing. I'm playing. I've been on vacation with a few of you and had a great time. A true friend will include you. A true friend, I know this sounds petty, but it's never about the thing. A true friend will include you on a post. I mean, you don't have to beg them. Um, and I'm going to say this, and they will include others. Well, they always include me. Yeah, but are they excluding others? Because it's only a matter of time that you're not going to make the cut. I'm preaching. See, I know I'm not. Ah, I'll do that. I'm preaching this series. You know, I, I, I've been waiting for two years 
to preach a series this December. I'm calling it, It's a Wonderful Church. You know, It's a Wonderful Life. How many of you have ever even heard of that show, It's a Wonderful Life? Uh, Jimmy Stewart. That's right, Clarence. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to prove to you this is a wonderful church. I'm going to preach. I'm just teaching today. The E, the E stands for encouraging. Encouraging. How do you feel when you're in their presence? Do you feel better about yourself? Now, some of it can be your own insecurities. Let's just get real. But if they're always discouraging you, if they know something hurts your feelings, if, if, if you're overweight and they, they made a two or three cracks and, 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 and they continue to do it, or if you're shorter in stature or, or whatever it might be, Feel like you're too skinny. I don't have that problem. <laughs> but whatever it is, and they, you know, they know it hurts your feelings and they continue to do it, they're not your friend. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. Like, man, this wasn't a life-giving sermon. You, you're here to tell me everybody hates me. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, do you feel better or worse when you leave their presence? Because friends build each other up. I didn't hurt your feelings, did I? I'm just, just playing. They're my friends. Encouraging. N stands for necessary. Necessary. We think friends are options. Well, if I really connect with somebody, no, you better find somebody to connect with. Friends are necessary. Friends are not an option. We think church is an option. Well, if I'm not doing anything else, I'll go to church. If nothing else happens, I'll just go to church. I'll go hang out. You know, if I, I may go serve in the nursery once every now and then if I feel good. Or I may do this or I may do that. Run a camera. By the way, thank you, camera guys, for being so faithful. Production team. Let's give them a great hand. But, you know, gangs, inner city gangs, normally will not attack you when you're with your people. They normally wait and they isolate you from the brothers, the sisters, and then they attack you. That's how gangs normally work. Satan, your enemy, is much the same way. He's a coward. He normally won't attack you when you're in here. He will cause you to feel like you really don't need this. Well, it's good, but it's not necessary. It's not a necessity. I go to church, I pay my tithes every now and then if I get a good deal, I'll serve, I, you know, but it's not really necessary. He gets you to believe in that lie. And then before long, after he isolates, he will attack you. Your friends are necessary. Why? Because storms come and go, and you need a good friend. Storm, or friends are necessary because we need to know how to celebrate with each other. I've heard many stories of pro athletes that win championships and win the national, you know, the Super Bowl, whatever, and they celebrate them, and they look great on the, on the field, but then they go back to their hotel, and they have thoughts of suicide, and they drink their self to sleep with liquor because there's nobody to celebrate with. I don't want to be so lonely that I can't celebrate. That's why I see people like you guys and, and y'all and people on the front row that's been here, been here a minute, you know, and we get to celebrate something here next year when we move in that new building. I want to celebrate with all of you, you know, eight, nine hundred, maybe a thousand by then. Let's believe for two thousand by then. But I really get to celebrate with those that have been with us in the trenches through setting up and tearing down in the schools. And, and you weren't maybe there for that. You can't go back and do that. I wish you could. I wish I could have used you. <laughs> but but you weren't, you can't do that. But you can be faithful now and we can get some history and get some years under our belt and we can celebrate together. What's the point of in achieving something if you can't celebrate with each other but if all you have is friends around you that want to take take hits at you when you want to your when you succeed when you get a promotion when you get a blessing all they want to do is take hits and take shots at you you don't need those kind of people you need friends that'll celebrate with you you know friends are necessary because of connections you might need a job <laughs> you might need a deal you might and if all you do is you're a lone ranger you're gonna become a lone stranger Right? And you need a deal. I like what they say. If you're not networking, you're not working. Now, we don't come to church to hook up and get deals and go on dates and all that. 
But I'm just saying you need to have some faith friends in your life that when you get laid off, you got 10 faith friends that can, first of all, believe God with you, speak life over you, encourage you. There's better out there. And then, oh, by the way, he's looking for your very position. Won't you give him a call? Because you had a faith friend. But if you just do life all by yourself, you could be on employment and calling that the will of God. It's not the will of God for anybody to be here unemployed. The Bible says a man don't work, don't eat. God's called you to be greater and better than that. Nothing wrong with it for a season if you need it. He's going political. No, I'm not. Counsel, we need counsel. I don't make a tough, hard decision as a pastor of this church, even as a parent. <laughs> I got eight to ten men, and we got women as well. Leanne and I have relationships of people that are higher than us in ministry, maybe big brothers and big sisters, uh, Scott and uh, Cindy are, are two of them, Keith and Sheila, different ones that are in our world, Bishop Boland, Steve Brock, Tony Brock. I could, the list could go on. I got, we got about 10 that we call and get on speaker, FaceTime them. And I, I remember I, when I pr uh, preached at that little uh, prayer vigil uh, that we had uh, in the George Floyd uh, situation. You know what I'm talking about in the, in the part there? I remember Keith, he was at the beach, and, and I texted him and said, hey, pray for me. I'm about to, this is Pastor Keith Kraft, man. He's a pretty big name, big guy, you know, and he FaceTimes me. And he's, in the, he's in the, at the beach in his condo with his shirt off. <laughs> no, he's out on the beach. That's what it was. He's out on the beach, and he said, God's going to give you favor. And he just started blessing me and praying over me. You've got to have people like that in your world. Friends are necessary. When you get older, when, when Leanne and I get older, it's just going to be me and Leanne. Our girls are going to have their own life. We hope they stick around. But, kind of. <laughs> but Leanne says, I already get boring and old. and She, she forces me to get out and let's have friends. <laughs> And, and we need that because if we're not, we're going to be 70, 80 years old and <laughs> a friend gives you an opportunity to help somebody because it's not all about you and me. I mean, mature disciples, they move beyond going to church to get fed. I'm just going to be honest with you. Look at me. Social media, just go get some coffee real quick. <laughs> Turn it off, get some donuts, come back in two, give me two minutes to be daddy for a second. Some of you are so selfish. Let me just go ahead and tell you, 95% of you are so selfish. Man, who needs to hear this sermon? No, you need to hear this sermon. Because people having to beg you to take care of your own kids? You come to church every blessed week, and serve me, serve me, feed me, feed me. And you're supposed to be spiritual? Give me five more minutes. <laughs> because we're a typical church. It's not because we're bad. But churches in North America are consumer driven. What can you do for me? Do you have this? Do you have this? If you don't have this... I'm going here. Instead of thinking, I may be the answer to this. At some point, if me and Robert went to lunch, and I've said this before, but if I took the spoon and tried to feed him, can you see me and him, two grown men at lunch, and I take the spoon, and he'd slap that thing out of my hand, rightfully so. Thank you, Pastor, but I can feed myself. You need to feed yourself. And come in and pour into others. At least be a smile and faith. Well, at least sit where the usher asks you to sit. At least give 10%. It's the elementary level of generosity. That's elementary. But no, if I say too much more, I, I said about 15 seconds too long right there. Because if I say too much, I'll just go down the street where they just, they do everything. That's fine. They're growing a big church, but they're not growing big people. They're getting fat and lazy. Spiritually. Spiritually. 
Friends are necessary. I don't know how I got on that. Oh, because it, you need friends to help. <laughs> I got to go quick. I got to go quick. I'm one minute and 31 seconds. D is for defensive. A true healthy friend is defensive. They will defend you. Well, they do. They do. They. That's about when you're not there. <laughs> well, how do I know? Do they defend others when they're not there? Because if they're talking about you to me, they're eventually they'll be talking about me to you. Pastor, you don't know. Man. They don't like you. Guess what? They don't like you either. <laughs> and some people don't stop coming to this church because of me because I'm, I'm a good preacher. Some of it's because of you. Snoot them. Don't talk up to them. Just <laughs> hit the door. You don't care about anybody in here. You just care about you. <laughs> Tight, but it's right. I remember they talked about old brother Hagen, senior, senior. Um, uh, a lady at our old church was telling me she used to work for for the Rama and everything, and she said that uh, an elder in the church came. Uh, somebody came up to that elder and said, "Did you hear about Brother Hagen? He had, in their eyes, made a made a mistake, a decision, not immoral, just just something he did, they didn't like." And and I love his response. The elder said, "They said, did you hear about Brother Hagen's situation?" And the elder said, "Nope." And I still wouldn't know about it if you wouldn't have told me. Does gossip flow through you or does it stop with you? And it takes more than a mouth to gossip. It takes ears. You can, you can gossip by just using your ears. Because what gets in your ears eventually can get in your mind. What gets in your mind eventually is going to control your decisions. All somebody has to do is just say something. I saw you post about free life. Let me tell you about free life. And I think what you should say is say, no, no, tell me about your life. I want to hear about you. How can I help you? Stay out of my life. Not to mouth they're negative. You, if you're watching online, you would think our church sucks. We got an amazing <laughs> church. We really do. This is, this is rare. I shouldn't have told everybody to share this message. Why did I do that? Gosh. Uh, okay, okay. S, S, somebody can let me, help me land this plane, get a, get a keyboard here or something. S is for selflessness. Life-giving, healthy friends are selfless. Have you ever been around that friend that the conversation always leads back to them? <laughs> Somehow, some way, you can be in a conversation and you can be spilling your guts. My marriage, uh... And somehow, some way, within 30 seconds, it gets on their marriage. It gets on their life. You, you, you know, have you ever been around one-up-yous? I won't call it any names, but I got some pastor uh, casual friends that I, I can't be around them too long. Because I don't care what's going on. They want to one-up you. And they don't understand. It ain't all about them. It's about me. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. Not really. But our actions, are your actions selfless? I mean, at some point, they need to buy lunch. Have you ever been on that person that every time they, they forgot their wallet? That's what Cecil does every Sunday. Cecil forgets his wallet. I'm like, okay, come on. Support my, my father-in-law. My mother-in-law there. Feed the poor. <laughs> Conversations, decisions, motives. Are they feelings conscious? But you may be asking, I got to move quick because I'm already over time. You may be asking, Pastor Richie, um, I got a few friends and it looks like five out of seven, they don't make the cut. They're not seven for seven. They're three for seven. They're four for seven. They're missing one or two of these. What do I do? I'm going to ask you three questions based on that question. Number one, what kind of friend are you? Because the kind of friend you are is the friend you'll attract. Proverbs 18, 24 says, if you want friends, you must show yourself friendly. So it tells you how to be a friend. What kind of friend will you attract? 
If you're friendly, you will attract friendly friends. So you can't cut on somebody else if you don't measure up. So basically, instead of a job interview for them to be your friend, I just interviewed you to see what kind of friend you are. What kind of friend are you? Number two, what kind of friend is Jesus? Thank God Jesus don't just cut us when we don't measure up. So I'm not telling everybody to go out of here and just start defriending people. <laughs> I want non-free lifers to see your post. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm just saying God is faithful. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, I believe 24 again, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I will never leave you nor forsake you. The prophet said, even if I make my bed in hell, you're still there. He's faithful. Are you faithful? Are you as loyal as your friend is? Because for a marriage or any kind of relationship to break, it's got to take two. I like what an old preacher said to me one time. We were in a conference, and he turned around and looked at me. and said, and he didn't even know me, but it was so funny. He said, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> I was like, I love that. There ain't nothing any of you can do to stop me from loving you. You may leave this church. I told somebody earlier, if you, if you say you're leaving, I'm going to come get your car keys. We got to be like that. Now, if you're causing problems, we'll help you out. <laughs> we, ain't, we ain't needy here. <laughs> But I'm just saying, we give up on people too quick. The thing is never about the thing. Stop, stop judging people's motives. You may could judge their actions. That's undeniable maybe. But their motives and their heart, that's what Jesus was talking about. He said, judge as you be judged. You can judge actions. That's not sin. But you can't judge motives and heart because you're not Jesus. You don't know their motives and their heart. And number three, so what kind of friend am I? What kind of friend is Jesus? And number three, do I really want this friend in my life? <laughs> really? Or do I just feel like I need him? Is it desire or desperation? Because Bishop Jakes, man, a few years ago, many years ago, probably 15 or 16 years ago, I remember him teaching one time, and he wasn't obviously just me. I don't, I'm not like, you know, homeboys with Jakes. I'm just saying... <laughs> I, 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 he feeds me and I listen to him and I remember him saying that God gave him a new gift and it's one of the greatest gifts any preacher can ever have it's called the gift of goodbye <laughs> and that's not with an attitude that's just understanding the only person you need to not leave you is your God and your family that's all you need so my, my, my thought process, the way that I process things now, even as a pastor, I don't want you to leave me because I love you, not because I need you. See the difference? Because God's brought strangers in here to pay the bills. God builds his church, Matthew 16, 16 through 18, and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. So you got to get that attitude. Don't need people. Is this relationship out of desire? Or out of desperation, because that's manipulation. 